I'm Insomniac and welcome to my channel. Today is Wednesday the 13th of July, just gone 6pm. So this video is a little later than I would ordinarily record, um, partly because I did try to have a nap earlier. Uh, wasn't successful. <laughs> I'm exhausted. Um, I've had a really busy day today um, trying to sort through um, and my youngest, she's off to college this September, so just trying to get lots of things in place um, for that. So yeah, it's been really, really busy, and it's boiling, so just dying in this heat. Um, what's it? So yeah, um, where were we? Um, I've been trying to uh, still chase. The endocrinologist to discuss the cortisol results. Um, still no luck yet. Um, as I said before, um, my my endocrinologist's secretary um, has left. I don't I I don't know why. I've not been given a reason, but she's no longer working there, and so somebody else is sort of taking over my particular endocrinologist's um, case like like secretarial duties and things like just until somebody else has been found for the position but I was calling the number of the old endocrinologist because I thought well maybe someone sat at the desk or something but um, but secretary uh, no nobody was picking up that one and then I was calling who's supposed to have taken over um, like just until another endocrinologist secretary is available. Um, I've not been able to get hold of her for over a week either. Um, so I'm not quite sure what to do. All of last week I was trying to get hold of them. Um, this week I've been trying. Still to no bad. I don't know if they've had like two weeks annual leave or something and I'm just calling like at the wrong time. I don't know. I do try calling maybe twice a day, like maybe sort of maybe three times a day sort of half nine quarter to ten and then I usually try around eleven and then I usually try around two so those are the times I try so it is quite varied it's not as if I'm just calling like at nine o'clock in the morning each time or something mm. so that's that so I've no idea what the cortisol readings are. I was talking in the comments, somebody I've talked to quite a bit called Rob. Hi Rob. <laughs> um, and he was suggesting that um, perhaps um, I had to look into magnesium. Maybe I've got too much magnesium in my diet and that could be causing the um, sort of tingling, shooting pains and that upset tummy and that. Um, I did actually have a look at, um, well first I'll carry on this bit. Um, I, I looked at the folate deficiency like symptoms and one of them is something called parathesia or something which is like the those sorts of pains that I had been experiencing it doesn't mention tummy trouble so it's more sort of like nerves um, so that's reassuring to know that it's probably related to the folate deficiency probably um, I did however check all my previous bloods because I'm sure I had magnesium done at some point but I haven't actually um, not through the doctors um, at least I haven't had it done through the doctor's surgery or um, my endocrinologist hasn't asked for them but I did tell you all a while back that I had some I'll find out the name of it in a minute yeah I have got my phone with me um, I had some kind of testing done that I paid for privately, like there was some sort of code available, some, you know, website that's quite popular in England, uh, like for a discount. Um, and so I used one of these companies um, to, uh, what was it, I sent off, like, um, they said to get some hair, like close to the root, but not including the root, so like just cut as close to the root as you can without actually pulling the hair from the root. So I did do that, um, and that came back with like 
alleged intolerances. Like, I don't know for sure if if it's all real or if it's like a gimmick or whatever. I don't know. Um, because the thing is, some of the things that I know do give me jip never showed up in it. So that leads me to think, hmm, is it all as it seems or is it like, uh, you know, like just telling everybody, oh, you're deficient in this or all oh, your... Um, intolerant to that when actually you're not you know there's no way of knowing really unless you like i don't think like i think it tested like hundreds of things and there's no way you can really get all of that for what did i pay about 30 pounds so but that's because it was on a substantial discount like well maybe they price it up when it's not on a discount but um it's meant to meant to be around 90 pounds and i got it for just under 30, maybe 25, 30 pounds, something like that. Uh, sorry, I needed that tea. Right, what was I going to do? So I've got a little list. Now I'm up with the list, so what have we discussed? So, oh, that's what I was going to say. So on that, um, the hair thing that I did, that was back, oh God, I haven't even got the date of it. Um, it was this year. Probably I'm guessing around March time, March, April time I did it. Um, actually, it might have been a little bit before then, February, March, I'd say, that I, I got that done. Um, I actually got two done, so I got one done the previous year, um, sort of like autumn time, maybe, autumn, winter time last year. Um, and then I had another repeat done like with a different company. The first company, I think I was able to use fingernails. But not whole fingernails, like <laughs> clippings, clippings. So just like cut a few of my nails down and sent those off. Um, but this time I did the hair one just to see if there was any difference. A lot of them did actually match up. Um, so pretty much the same stuff. But in that, that's where I'd read about the magnesium. So with that, it said I had several deficiencies. I'm on about like maybe 10, 12, 14 deficiencies. So, like I said, I don't know, like, how reliable these things are. But it says that with the magnesium, I'm actually 88% deficient in it. Um, I'm also deficient in... Yeah, let's have a little look. Vit Ooh, vitamin D, I know for sure. Calcium is another one. Um, let's have a quick look. So, where are we? Deficiencies. I don't even know what half of these things are. I think I might have Googled them um, at the time just to see what they were and then basically just left it. I ended up taking like a vitamin B complex for a little while, um, coenzyme Q10, because I was deficient in that, magnesium because I was deficient, vitamin D because I was deficient, but I wasn't sort of like taking these... I'm terrible with vitamins. Like I'll take them usually maybe for about a week or two. And then, like, maybe about twice a week, and then I forget about it entirely. Except the folate that's been prescribed, because when things have been prescribed, I see it as slightly different. Like, I see it as a lot more important, because a doctor has actually turned around and said, look, you're deficient in this, you need this, here's this, and it is a tablet. So I just keep it with my other medication and take it alongside that. So I've been on the folate, I think, for about... 10, 10, 11 days. No difference just yet. Um, yeah, yeah, not yet. So let's go on about these deficiencies. Like I said, I don't know, like I can't remember offhand what half of them are, um, but I did look them up at the time. So something called choline, C-H-O-L-I-N-E, I'm 100% deficient in. I'm actually going to see what that is, because how can you be 100% deficient in something like that? That's crazy. See, choline, what is that even? C-H-O-L-I-N-E. Oh, it's an R. Choline. Uh, what is that even? Um, I'll write deficiency. I can't for the life of me. Yeah, deficiency, there we are. Thank you. So, oh my god. That actually sounds quite terrible, really. Let's close this in a minute. So, 
Choline deficiency can cause muscle damage, liver damage, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. That's just a little bit on Google. Um, on a .gov website, um, is choline deficiency common? It's required for optimal health. It may play a key role in healthy brain function, heart health, liver function, and pregnancy. Although actual deficiency is rare, many people in Western countries are not meeting the recommended intake. Why have I never heard of this? Like, is there another word for it? Is it like a B vitamin or something? Uh, what is it? Let's see. What's another name for it? Choline deficiency. Uh, what would I even write? Uh, also known, actually I like symptoms, it might, uh, oh, okay, uh, I might need to get this checked out at the doctor's actually, um, choline deficiency symptoms and signs, low energy levels of fatigue, memory loss, cognitive decline, learning disabilities, muscle aches, nerve damage, mood changes or disorders, Obviously, I know it's not responsible for my bipolar because I've had bipolar since I was like, well, first manic episode of 15, so um, it's definitely not that. What is this then? Why have I never heard of this? There must be another word for it, like um, B something. Oh, okay. Co what? Oh, God. Choline is a water-soluble nutrient that is related to other vitamins such as folate and those in the B, 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 B vitamin complex family. Ah, just like B vitamins, choline plays a similar role in terms of supporting energy and brain function as well as keeping the metabolism alive, active. I was going to say alive. Ah, what if it makes you hungry? Because like, my hungers like I've been really really hungry and I've really chucked on weight like I'm up to 69 kilos now whereas so if it's earlier this year or earlier last year at some point I was 62 62 kilos and like, now I'm 69 so I'm really chucking it on so I've got to be careful now um so this this particular thing is used to create DNA for nerve signaling and for detoxification uh, and then a whole bunch of other stuff that I've never heard of, don't understand. What's it in? It's found naturally in foods including eggs. I eat, I eat loads of eggs. I really do. Liver. No. Beef. I eat a lot of beef. Salmon. I eat salmon. I actually eat quite a bit of that. Cauliflower. Brussels sprouts. Breast milk. Yeah, I drink a lot of that. <laughs> from a cow <laughs> um well it's still breast milk isn't it like it's just from an animal instead um so yeah that's it's, it's just really annoying that it's not saying like that it's like say b2 or b7 like it says it's related to the bees but it doesn't say what it is uh oh oh jesus christ a choline deficiency may also play a part in age-related cognitive decline, including memory loss and Alzheimer's. I think I read recently, actually, that vitamin D can be responsible. Not responsible, but can play a big role in, like, a lot of people who've got Alzheimer's do have vitamin D deficiencies, and they're not sure if the vitamin D deficiency can cause the Alzheimer's, or uh, which way around it is, like, chicken or the egg type thing, really. They're not entirely sure. Um... Oh, well, that's interesting. You know what? I, th I think I'm going to have to... The thing is, I don't think my GP would be very happy if I go in there. I've got the paperwork, the printout from this company, um, but I don't think she'd be happy if I go in there and say, look, I've got 14 vitamin deficiencies. Can you verify this, like, with my blood? Like, I don't think that, like... It's different, like, I think in, like, America and, like, places where, um, sort of health care is sort of privatised, they want to help you. Like, the more medication you're on, 
the more treatment you need, sort of the more they're making. So they want you to be ill, basically, in in a sense, because then, oh, whereas the NHS, it's like sort of like basically kind of, even though the NHS is absolutely brilliant, it's more about treating symptoms as they come up rather than sort of like digging and finding root causes of things all of the time. Sometimes they kind of like just paper things over um, a little. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's what's happened to me for years, um, like the papering over type thing. Right, let's uh, just go through a few of these. So, so that was the choline. That actually sounds, you know, relevant, actually. 100% deficient. That means I've got none of it in my body at all. And I've never even heard of it. Like, have any of you heard of it? Because I haven't. This is crazy. As I said earlier, magnesium 88% deficient. I'm not looking all of these up. It will take too long. Um, pyridoxine, 91% deficient. Tannins. I drink tea. <laughs> There's probably no relation. That's got tannins in. But that says I'm 96% deficient in tannins. Uh, B11 and B1, there's no percentage, so this must be the other one of the other companies because one of them gave percentages and the other one didn't. Uh, so B11 and B1 deficient, tyrosine deficient, all of these are going to be deficient that I say just so I don't have to keep saying the words. Mang, what's that? Manganese, oh god. Oh my word, I can't say that word. Manganese picolinate. Picolinate? I don't know how you pronounce that word. Selenium metallicum, meticulum? Sounds like something from Harry Potter, that one. Um, vitamin B5, that's far more British. <laughs> Easy to... Oh, and the next one isn't. Phenylalanin. Oh my God! What is with these words? Phenylalanin. Phenylal. Phenylalanin. Jeez! Oh my gosh! You definitely need to be awake for these. You can't say any of these if you're drunk, can you? Um, methyl. Cobalam. B12. That one says B12 in brackets. Um, coenzyme Q10, calcium axorbate, glumatic acid, lipase, lip, L I P A S E. I thought that's something to do with um, hunger, isn't it? Isn't that something to do with hunger? Like that's the hormone or something that's related to tell you, yep, yeah, you're full. So if I'm deficient in that, then no wonder I'm feeling hungry. Um, another calcium, calcium folinate and vitamin D. So, yeah. Um, and then the other little deficiencies that it had is um, with the gut biome, because that's the reason I took this one as well, is because um, obviously with the IBS C, um, I just wanted to see if there was anything I could take for it. And it says that lactobacillus Reutery, R-E-U-T-E-R-I, 99% deficient in that. Um, and Streptococcus 88% deficient. So, yeah. And then hormonal imbalances. This one they never test. I've asked again and again for them to test. They just won't do it. They only do the, what is it, the TSH and the um, T4. I asked for the T3 several times, they just, they just won't do it. But um, so hormonal imbalances, can't pronounce that word, um, but it's T3 anyway. 95% imbalance. Doesn't say if it's too high, too low, it doesn't say. But yeah, so those are the deficiencies. We'll go through my, uh, <laughs> what's it called? Um, 
sensitivities another time. I can't, I can't do the sensitivities today. It's too long. But one thing I am going to cover today um, is, is there any identifiable information on this? One sec. Just making sure it's not got. Yeah, I mean that should be fine. It's not got anything on it, has it? No, doesn't look like it. Well, as I said before, with the other one, the other one, the last video, um, I had the, I got the results through. Well, the doctor uploaded the results for the seven-day hold monitor ECG thing that I had done back in April. Um, and the results were available from 17th of May and it just never showed up. But that's because they didn't put it under results. They put it under is it consultations or something. And I, I rarely read that bit in my like patient access thing or whatever it's called, like where you can book your appointments and look at the test results and stuff like that. I never bother reading that bit, so no wonder I didn't see it. But anyhow, for anybody who understands cardiology, um, doo -doo 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 -doo, the BEATS total count for a week was 683,233 BEATS. Of that, 99% of those were normal. Um, I don't understand what that bit's on about. Uh, oh, the maximum beats per hour was actually 5,804. No idea. That means nothing to me. Beats. Uh, here it says ventricular, 3, which is under 1% difference, and su supraventricular, 11 paste zero percent heart rates okay so the maximum was 166 the minimum was 51 it does get lower than that so that must have been because i was stressed wearing it but it was higher than normal and the mean is 74 um okay so rate dis dependent events pause zero dropped beat one bradycardia zero tachycardia 106 episodes um, I'm not going to go through the ones that say zero. Okay, this one here, uh, under the ventricular beats. Uh, a sing single VE events. There were three of those. Um, which is under 1% of the time. So that's good. Uh, superventricular beats, um, SVT is fine, SVE run, fine, SVE couplet, there were one of those with two beats in it, um, it says SV beats 18%, under 1% um, irregularity, so that's good, single SVE events, there were nine, uh, SV beat count, Nine again, SV beats 82%, and again, that under the total beats, that's under 1% of the time again. But the only bit that makes a bit more sense is the bit where, obviously, someone's wrote something, I think a cardiologist, but it doesn't give any kind of, just basically says what it says up there, really. It doesn't give much clarification. It just says what the maximum heart rate was, the minimum, and the mean. Sinus rhythm throughout. Well, I hope so. I'd like to have thought I'd know if like, my heart stopped. Um, one episode of sudden drop in rates. Rare episodes of sinus tachycardia with gradual onset offset seen. Longest and fastest lasting three minutes with rates up to 172 beats per minute. And then in brackets, one minute heart rate 130 on Tuesday day the 12th at 2.45 in the afternoon. Uh, three isolated VE seen. Nine SVE seen as singles and one as a couplet. Patient diary event episodes show ECG recordings of sinus rhythm with one minute heart rate of 58 to 99 beats per minute. That's all it says. So, like I said, it says a few things that, that have happened. 
but there's no sort of like letter that came along with it like outlining oh we've analyzed this and we found that nothing so like I said I um I spoke to my GP I said you know these results have come in I've, I've seen you know a few things happened and 106 things of tachycardia like episodes of tachycardia um you know I was like what's what's your take on it kind of thing and uh yeah, so she's referred me to cardiology, which I'm not panicking about because uh, my dad, like my, my stepdad, um, he had this, but he had the opposite. They said that his heart rate was too slow. Um, they made him run on a treadmill measuring his heart rate. They made him wear a whole monitor, blood pressure, all of it. And they were like basically saying, you know, something's really, really wrong with that and the other. He, he was, you know you know obviously very very concerned and worried which was making the heart beat faster and everything which isn't so bad when you've got brachycardia but um yeah he was very very anxious about it all and then when he actually got to see the cardiologist for the results of the monitor the the running on the treadmill all of that they were like you know you've actually got a really healthy heart um yeah, it's a bit on the slow side, but that actually shows heart health. There's nothing wrong. I don't know why you're here, why you've been put through all of this. So, I mean, when when I first told my stepdad about um, me doing the Holter monitor, he was like, yep, yeah. Sam is like, just, just don't worry. Like, don't dwell on anything. If they say something, just take it with a pinch of salt. Wait until you've spoken to cardiology. Don't panic before that. There's just no point. So, um, yeah, I'm uh, waiting for that referral. Um, oh, no, I've lost my bit of paper. Where, where did it go? It's, like, flown away somewhere. I just don't know what I've done with it because on that bit of paper, it actually says what... Oh, there it is. Well, I was supposed to discuss. I kind of hid it under the pillow. Huh. So I've gone on about the deficiencies told you about the referral to cardiology ah okay that's the that's the last thing to talk about because we are pushed for time heading for 30 minutes and i like to keep them just kind of below 25 um so the last thing i'm going to mention is i finally heard back oh, so sorry it's really annoying i finally heard back from the um carpool tunnel the whoever's in charge of that depart like the department that that's in um, up at the hospital and um, basically um, he's been on holiday for a couple of weeks so that's why it took a little longer to get back to me um, but he's offered me an appointment um, on the 8th of August 10 o'clock in the morning so I'm going to go along to that uh, I don't know if they're going to do a nerve conduction test while I'm there or if it's literally just basically kind of like a physical and like I just like feel along my hands and fingers and I don't know like I've read conflicting things on the website some people are saying you know you you basically get it all done at once like you can have the nerve conduction study after they like look at your hands and everything and then you have the nerve conduction study and then I think it even said that they can offer like if you were to want to go down that route like say a steroid injection to help like where the pain's at its worst or something personally i i wouldn't want that simply because um well mostly because um i i'm not getting the shooting pains as much it's more sort of the pins and needles and that prickling and like burning hands and feet as well um but like i said it's in the feet too which is the parathesia or whatever it is. I think it could be that. So I don't think it is the peripheral neuropathy. I, th I think that's a little step too far. Um, I don't think I'm quite there, which is good. I'm glad about that. But I think But the thing that I'm a little bit worried about is that because it's in the feet and everything, I'm going to try and avoid mentioning that until he's had a look and everything first. And then towards the end... I might mention it it's just i don't want to say it at the very beginning and then he straight away is like right 
no, well then it can't be carpal tunnel because it's affecting your feet as well, so we're not even going to bother looking. Um, I'd rather him examine first, do a nerve conduction study. If he finds carpal tunnel, which I think he will, because that's kind of how it all began, um, he'll find that and then he'll probably see, you know, I've got a folate deficiency on top of that and parathesis or whatever it's called, parathesia, I can't remember what it's called, parathesia I think. Um, and then he'll realise, you know, that that's contributing, um, yeah, kind of hiding the carpal tunnel a little bit. Oh gosh, right, we're just past half an hour. I am so sorry. I am going to have to go. If you're enjoying my content, um, or at least you know it's helping you pass the time or whatever. Um, oh, I didn't see that bit. Please like what am i meant to do that please like comment what am i supposed to hear what's that all about i think i got this one back to front i don't know what is that i can see something there oh i don't know please like comment and subscribe i think this is back with it is isn't it like, there's a label there please like comment and subscribe if you'd like to be notified when i do a new video a superhero like this um yeah and hit the notification bell so that you get notified each time um thank you for joining me again i'm <laughs> taking that off <laughs> uh thank you for joining me again um and i hope to see you or i'll see you next week next wednesday so hopefully by then i will have the cortisol results in yeah and i think that's all i'm waiting on for now to be honest and if I hear from endocrinology, if they've got any more information, I will let you know. So, yeah, great. Okay, well, have a lovely evening, um, and I will see you next Wednesday. Take care, everyone. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.